Good morning everybody and welcome to our Sunday morning service that uh, we're doing jointly today. Um, it's the beginning of the week of prayer for Christian unity and I'm Stephen and I'm the vicar um, of Aundel and Benefield and Glatthorne. Brilliant, yeah it's great to be together today. Uh, I'm Martin, I'm the minister for Aundel Baptist Church and yeah we're really pleased to be able to join together to bring you this service today. So our service is going to be both on um, Aundel Baptist Church Facebook page and St Peter's Facebook page as well as YouTube for both of us and it's wonderful to be worshipping together. Well as well as being the week of prayer for Christian unity, uh, the theme this morning is um, the story of when Jesus turned water into wine and we're going to be reflecting about on uh, what that means for us today. Uh, shall we pray together? Let's pray. Yeah. 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 Father God, we thank you that we can join together as brothers and sisters in Christ, to worship you today. Father, we thank you that we can be united in your love. So Father, we pray that your spirit would be at work in us as we join together, as we worship you now, as we celebrate and as we learn more about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, and as part of our service today, we're going to have a time of creative worship later. So I'm giving you the heads up now to make sure you've got all the things that you're going to need for that. You will need a pair of scissors, um, a piece of paper about a quarter of the size of A4, um, you'll need a pen, and you'll need a bowl with some water in it. If you've got a number in your household, you might want to get a larger bowl um, with some water in. And we'll be worshipping creatively together later on in our service. We're going to prepare to worship now with some responses. If you would like to respond with the words that will come up in yellow. How good it is and precious when, when God's, God's people live together in unity. For there is one body and one spirit, one, one hope to, to which, which we are called, called. one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one God and Father of all, over, over all, through, through all, and in all. Therefore, we will make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And now let's continue our time of worship with our first song, Blessed Be Your Name, led to us by Annie from the Baptist Church.
Baptist Church to have a bit of a quiz as an introduction. And quite often it's a quiz where Martin gets lots of the answers wrong. I'm very excited this week because not only have I got Martin to do a quiz on, but I've also got Annabelle and Stephen as well. So they've got a quiz. The pictures are going to appear on the screens at home for you to see, but I've done them on paper for these three. And they're no peeking. They've not seen these pictures, I promise you, in advance. So the idea is that they've got pictures of creatures, of different animals. Animals that look different when they're babies to how they do when they're grown up as adults. And so there's a transformation there, which is a bit of a theme for our service. So if you'd like to turn the pages, the first page, which is a blank one, and you will see a young there of a particular animal. And I'm going to ask Annabelle this one first, just kicking off for us. So, calling up the answers at home, see who gets it right in your house. Annabelle, do you know which one? It's some form of grub. I would say, is it a moth? Well, that's a good guess, but no. Oh. I know you too. <laughs> um, no, no, we haven't got gardeners here, have we? That's no, that's no, no, it's no. no. <laughs> turn, the page, turn the page and you will then see that that actually is oh a lady. A seven spot ladybird. And the seven spot ladybird is native to our country. Right, so the next page, Martin, this one is for you. Now there's an obvious easy answer to this, but I want specifics, please. <laughs> it's a bird. It is, actually, it's more than one there. So oh, next the baby birds. Yeah. And I want to know which one. I see as, it's not quite making the I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say for no particular reason other than we're living in Alban where there are lots of them red kite. You would be completely wrong. There you go. Anybody else got an answer? Well, obviously it's a blackbird. Uh, no. <laughs> Is it a cuckoo? Uh, no. If oh. you turn the page you'll see that's a robin. <laughs> oh. um, Martin should know that because we actually had a nest of them in our garden two years ago and we know not for that one, so they But there you go, never mind. Okay, turn the page for the next one. Stephen, this one oh. is for you. <laughs> This might look easy, but I want specifics, please. Well, it's um, a natter jack toad. Oh, you're not far wrong. <laughs> oh. Actually, that's a pretty good guess. It is a toad. It is. Yeah. It's not a natter jack toad. Well, obviously it's a toad, but you want specific. You know, we're not as much as that. It's a common toad, but it is okay. a toad. So well done. Very good. Yes. So if you turn the page there, it's a picture of a toad. Okay, so the next one, we're back to Annabelle. Well, it's an insect. Correct. Six legs. Yep. Yeah. Head, thorax, and abdomen. Yep, definitely that. Um, is it a scorpion? It is not a scorpion. Is it a grasshopper? Nope. Nope. Actually, it lives in water, that particular young. If you turn it over the page, you'll see it is a dragonfly larva. I think that's a remarkable transformation. They don't look anything like <laughs> as adults. Are you feeling confident this time? Oh, I'm, I'm feeling on top of the Right, turn the page. They're doing well here, aren't they? I think some people are doing better. I feel doing better at home. Mini beasts. <laughs> You're better than us, I'm sure. Turn the page. Oh no. That is bad. Do you feel a little relieved? I'll tell you that this is actually the trickiest one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to say it's going to turn into a moth. You would be wrong. Maybe. Anybody else like to guess? Is it a green fly? No, but you're closer. Well, then a uh, um, house fly. <laughs> no, not that either. This is actually a larva of a sawfly. Uh -huh. Now, a sawfly, that's a common pest on roses if you grow roses. But the um, sawfly larvae are often mistaken for caterpillars because they look very much like caterpillars, but they are not true caterpillars because they have too many heads. Okay, next one. Stephen, the last one is you. And again, I want specifics. So, okay. <laughs> how is your identification of... Well, I don't go much beyond moth or butterfly. Well, um, yeah, so you've got a 50-50. Oh, I see. Okay, well, <laughs> therefore... Uh, it's um, a butterfly. Correct. Anybody know which butterfly it is? Again, is it a red this is a common... No, it is a common... Shell? No, but it is a common... Check 
Let's skip that. <laughs> we could be here a long time if we were going through the whole list. Do you have a guess? No, it's not. If you turn the page, you will see that is the caterpillar of the peacock butterfly, which I happen to think is perhaps one of the most beautiful native butterflies that we have. So, okay, they're not brilliant, I have to say, on your mini beast <laughs> identification for many of you, but a pretty good guess. I hope you did better at home. But the idea of the quiz is to look at creatures who are really different when they're young to when they are in their adult phase of their life. And one of the things that we think about as Christians is this idea of transformation and how God is at work by his spirit in our lives to transform us into the people that he really wants us to be, to transform us into the people that he made us to be so that we can reach our true potential in him. Psalm 133. It is good and pleasant when God's people live together in peace. It is like perfumed oil poured on the priest's head and running down his beard. It ran down Aaron's beard and on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Mount Hermon falling on the hills of Jerusalem. There the Lord gives his blessing of life forever. Thank you for that Bible reading. Often by reading the Bible we become aware that maybe we haven't lived up to God's standards. So we're now going to have a time of confession where we can come before God to say sorry for the times we haven't loved him with our whole heart our whole mind, our whole strength, and our whole being. So let's be quiet, and at the end of each section, we will say, Father, in your mercy, and if you would respond with the words, forgive us. Heavenly Father, Jesus came to proclaim the good news. Sometimes we have been too timid in proclaiming your good news. Father, in your mercy, forgive us. Heavenly Father, Jesus came to proclaim freedom for the oppressed and imprisoned and good news for the poor. Sometimes we have failed to stand by those in need. Father, in your mercy, forgive, forgive us. us. Heavenly Father, Jesus said, By this all people will know you are my disciples when you love one another. Lord, sometimes when we've seen our fellow Christians not as brothers and sisters, but as rivals, we are sorry. Father, in your mercy, forgive, forgive us. May, May the Father, Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, sins and by his Holy Spirit restore us in his image to the, the praise and glory of his name, name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In a moment I'm going to lead us in a time of creative worship and then after that we're going to sing our second hymn, Waymaker which will be led by Annie. So get your things ready for creative worship now. Good morning and welcome to our creative worship time this morning. At St Peter's we've been exploring how we can meet with God in a variety of different ways. And this is a time when we can be a little bit more creative and allow God to speak to us. We've been looking at the great dreams the keys to living well that was produced by Action for Happiness. We've explored the G for giving, the M for meaning, being part of something bigger than ourselves is a good thing to do. Last week we looked at acceptance, looking at who we were, that we are made in God's image and that God has given us strengths that we reminded ourselves of. And we also looked at the E for emotions, looking at what God would say about us. And this week, we're going to reflect on the T of great dream, and that is trying out. Our story today, Jesus tried out something new. He turned water into wine. Now, you can have a go at that if you want, but I would suggest that was a miracle that maybe only Jesus could do. 
but I want you to reflect this morning on what things you could try out that are new during this lockdown. Trying something new can give us a sense of achievement. It helps us remain curious as we explore and learn new things and it can boost our self-confidence. So to help us reflect on that, you need a piece of paper, probably about a quarter of an A4 sheet of paper. I've chosen some coloured paper this week, but you don't have to. It can be any colour you like. And on your piece of paper, can I invite you to draw a flower shape? Don't worry about being artistic, but maybe it has four petals, could have five, whichever you prefer. Cut your flower out so you end up with a shape like that. And then while we listen to a piece of music in a minute, can I invite you to think, what are some of the things that you could try out that are new? Write them on the different petals of your flower. Could it be a new skill that you've been dying to learn and never got around to it? Put that down and maybe commit over this lockdown to learn that new skill. Or is it to sign up for a course? So there are some brilliant courses on the Northamptonshire Adult Learning site. Have a look, many of them are free. Try one of those. Or try a new recipe that you've been dying to eat or a new food that you've never tasted. Or maybe try out a new phone app and discover something new on your phone or your computer. When you've written some of those ideas on your petals, then fold each of the petals down and into the middle, like that. Give them a good crease where you folded them. Oops. And then what you need to do is lay that flat with the petals facing up. Take a bowl of water. Uh, if there's many in your household, you'll need a bigger bowl than a cereal bowl and then place your flower on the water and watch what happens as we offer that prayer to God, asking him to help us to try out those new things this week. So reflect upon them, pray as you watch something happen to them, as we lift that prayer to God. So enjoy our time of creative worship and enjoy maybe this week trying out some of those new things that you commit to God.
Our second reading is taken from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests 
have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. Thank you to our reader. Well, um, we thought we'd do something a little bit different this week. We did. <laughs> Rather than... Uh, fight one another for who was going <laughs> to going to preach this Sunday as this joint service that actually we'd have a conversation over scripture uh, and uh, reflect on those words that have just been read to us and what they mean and why not at home um, you know have you got questions thoughts mm. comments reflection on these verses why not put that in the chat and uh, we were reflecting on how it's really important that what we learn on a Sunday from scripture becomes something that goes over into our week and we Definitely. think about it through the week yeah yeah, brilliant. And it might even be, you know, drop your comments on the, on the screen and we can look at them uh, later. But also over coffee, when we join together for our coffee, yeah. we can perhaps share our thoughts to one another there as yeah. well. Start that conversation. Yeah. So uh, yeah. what does this um, account of Jesus turning water into mm. wine uh, mean for us? We were reflecting, weren't we, on um, two words that were sort of coming out of our conversation yep. beforehand which were around um, event and sign and uh, I wondered if you had any thoughts on that Martin yeah well I, I initially I was focusing on the idea of sign yeah. and um, the language that, that John uses because yeah. quite often I mean the other gospels use the term miracle and John chooses the word sign and it's deliberate um, he, yeah. he's using those words for a reason and and quite simply, I think when we think of miracles, we think of the event, which yeah. we're going to come on to, but we yeah. think of what was happening. So if you think of feeding the 5,000 or calming the storm or walking yeah. on the water, the focus is on what is actually happening. Yeah. But John is saying we need to look beyond that. There is a sign to this. Yeah. And John wants to take our focus away, perhaps from the event, yeah. as important as that is, yeah. but to think of what else is happening and what, what God is saying yeah. through what is, what is going on. And I wonder whether it's... Um... It's taking our taking our focus beyond so that we see the sign and understand this as an event that happened yeah. but at the, at the one and the same time as it being an event that happened there is something that John wants us to take away as a meaning for us a deeper deeper meaning Definitely. for us yeah um, so should we just through, reflect mm -hmm. on what the event was yeah um, and I just find it fascinating to imagine Jesus on a wedding list. This is domestic Jesus, in a sense. Yeah. And there's that sense of him growing up in this community, being invited to a wedding. Yeah. And um, this epiphany season is about Jesus being revealed to the world, a little bit of, of that transition to people beginning to see him in a different light. Yeah. And maybe that's something to do with that com odd conversation he has with his mother about, um, you know, is my time yet come? Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, then uh, the, the event that's at the heart of it is that these um, uh, jars of water are transformed into wine that overflows uh, because they've run out of wine at a wedding. Yeah. And I just find it really um, interesting that Jesus' first miracle isn't something that is, is pressingly important, like someone who needs to be healed, or a storm that needs to be calmed, or, or, or people that need fed actually... It is almost, um, I'd say the word was gratuitous, it's over the top, it's yeah. unnecessary in one yeah. sense. Yeah. It's a wedding that ran out of wine. <clears throat> it's a social disaster for the family. Yeah. But, but it's but just this that's free yeah. gift of yeah. more wine that you never need to bless a wedding with. Yeah, yeah. So, there's a lot of wine, wasn't there? We, <laughs> we, we said there's about 800 bottles of wine, we, we, we would reckon. Yeah. Uh, of top quality wine as well. Six um, stone jars yeah. with... Um, between 80 and 100, so that's maybe around about 600 litres, yeah. just more wine than they could, they could possibly um, use. It would be a great wedding gift. Wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so there's something amazing. Yeah. Um, and the, the name, the, the title we gave this service was Overflowing mm. Grace. Mm. And I guess grace is God's undeserved free yeah. gift. And here is an unearned free gift of here you yeah. are, here's more wine than you will ever need of the best possible quality. Um, so at the heart, that, that's kind it? of yeah. the event. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. But, there's a, but Jesus calls it a sign and there's a deeper, deeper meaning to it. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, and I find it interesting that it was stone water jars, and I think mm. it says they were used for ritual, here we are, yeah, for ceremonial cleansing, verse yeah. 6. And I think something around the sign might be in, in that. These jars that were used to make sure that you were, um, you, you'd gone through all the religious ceremonies to make sure that you were clean. Yeah. Uh, in that culture, whether you'd been in contact with a Gentile or you'd been in contact with some, uh, somebody who might have eaten unclean food, you needed to be ritually yeah. clean yeah. before you prayed, I think you needed to do this. Yeah. Here was the water for that. And it was that water which was connected with ceremonies Yes, yeah. that Jesus turned into this delicious, overflowing wine of the best quality. And as you say, that's the sign of, of the old way of doing things, the old ritual yeah. cleansing that you needed to do to be right with God. Yeah. And Jesus kind of transforms that, doesn't he? Yeah. In, in, those, in that moment where the water becomes wine um, and is symbolising that, that new way of doing things. Yeah. And, uh, there, there was um, a survey I came across of an American university where students were asked what do you think about Christianity mm. and uh, the the results of that survey were really challenging um, it was words like judgmental dull boring um, uninteresting um, and it really made me think you know it really makes us think how do we here's Jesus who comes and his first miracle is to turn uh, water into gallons of the best quality wine yeah. his Jesus who encounters people and their lives are transformed his people Jesus who encounters people who feel they've messed up and gone wrong and are given new beginnings his Jesus who who speaks of the prodigal story of the prodigal son and, and grace that overflows and forgiveness and new beginnings how on earth did we get to the point yeah. <laughs> where people's perspective would be like that yeah it's incredible isn't it it's um I think that's religion over, over um, a Christ-centered life. I think it's the routine, the rituals, it's the stone jars, yeah. the mundane and the routine rather than that overflowing expression of, of, of grace and joy. And I guess there's a challenge for me in there into to what does that water into wine look like yeah. for me. Yeah. When I was um, a little child, we used to <laughs> have um, water at lunch each day, but on Sundays we would have um, juice <laughs> uh, for, and so um, I used to ask um, my, I'd get into a routine of asking my mum whether we're having juice today uh -huh. uh, from Monday through to Saturday and she would say something like yes we're having cloud juice now unfortunately cloud juice <laughs> turned out to taste remarkably <laughs> like water <laughs> but I would long for that Sunday when we had yeah. that full flavour yeah. and I think when we talk about um, the sign that, that's that's in this event the sign that's embedded in this miracle it is that when Jesus comes he comes to turn ordinary tasteless cloud juice mm. into the best tasting wine mm. he comes to transform he comes to give us as he says later in the Gospels life in all its fullness yeah. we can be maybe sad about that survey and critical of that survey mm. and yet there's a real challenge for us because it asks us the question are we living that life in all its fullness and do we exemplify that in the way we live as Christians mm. and how can we um, continually encounter this richness of wine that is yeah. is a relationship yeah. with Jesus Christ uh, that's really interesting you said I'll come back to what you just said in, yeah. in a second because there was something in that yeah. that just struck me as we were talking that's good. But, something in it. but um <laughs> there's lots in it sorry <laughs> yeah. but there's as, as we were reading around this, there was a, an expression that, uh, an old Jewish expression okay, that yeah. the, the, the rabbis used, and it says, without wine, there is no joy. Yeah. And, and perhaps your, your story of, of cloud juice Monday yeah. to Saturday, and, and not wine, but juice <laughs> yeah. on Sunday, yeah. that's the, the joy when you get to taste the, yeah. the, the, the juice yeah. on a Sunday. And you said about a longing, yeah. and, and a longing for that. And actually, yeah. I think that's, that's what this is about. Yeah. Um, when we read about these surveys that yeah. are church is dull and boring, yeah. I want to ask, where's the longing? Yeah. Because if we're longing for that juice, we're yeah. longing for the wine that only comes from Christ, then that's where we get our joy. Yeah. So the joy is in, 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 the, in, in finding that wine, yeah. discovering that wine for ourselves. And actually, it being Monday to Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, right. <laughs> Available yeah. every day. Yes, that's right. Yes, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, the limits are off. You, yes. can have, you can have the drinks every day of the week. Yeah. 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 So what does it mean? Let's unpack that mm. then. But what is this transformation we're talking about? What is this wine yeah. that is the best to last, that tastes better than anything, that is the richest, best? Mm. What is this life in all its fullness? Or, or earlier in John's Gospel, he's mm. talked about from the fullness of his grace, we have received blessing after blessing after blessing. What is that? And I guess maybe that's an invitation for us as we're taking part in this service now to reflect what does Jesus mean to me? And I guess for me, um, I would reflect on forgiveness. That um, things I've been conscious of in my life that I had messed up and gone wrong and that in him I find, I have found and continue to find forgiveness and a new beginning. Yeah. Um, I discover a relationship with a heavenly father who knows me and loves me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I love those words in Paul, St. Paul, where he talks about, and Jesus uses the word as well, Abba, Father, that I can know God as my, you know, it seems a bit trivial, but God is my daddy, God is my yeah. father, God who loves me, mm -hmm. God who knows me, God who made me, that we encounter, and maybe at the heart of this judgmentalism, uh, actually, that's a phrase I've used before, and it's a phrase I've heard somebody in our church community use, but a discovery that God is not mad at me, but mad about me. And right. so much yeah. so that he came. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the people through the, as we read through these gospels, mm. we will find people who encounter in Jesus Christ, not a God who's against them, but a God who's for them. Not a God who judges them, but a God who forgives them. Yeah. A God who would stretch out his arms on a cross and bring forgiveness. And... This life in all its fullness doesn't mean we're not going to have struggles and difficulties and doubts and anxieties and worries. But it is discovering that we have a Father who loves us, who's with us through thick and thin, yeah. and who promises life in all its fullness in eternity. Um, that's so much there, but it's sort yeah, of it's <laughs> huge. how we what does it mean yeah. to have this 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 life in all its yeah. fullness, this wine? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it means turning a, a dull life perhaps into yeah. an extravagant exciting um life yeah um, an abundant life yeah. a life that is just full to overflowing of the grace yeah. of god and um that again that was something that we, as we've been yeah. mulling around together that that idea of these jars were full to the brim you couldn't move yeah. them well you couldn't move them anyway i would yeah. guess but yeah. but without you knock them and and they spill over yeah and i think that's something for us as well yeah if we have christ in our lives yeah that the abundant offering of his wine in our lives his yeah. grace in our lives will be so much that we are filled to the brim yeah so the slightest nudge yeah and we spill out we overflow yeah. and, and i think there's something about yeah how do we make the church exciting how do we make yeah how do we how do we help people to see that yeah. a life following christ is exciting well we have to be full to overflowing and spinning over yeah. in what we do. And I got that vision of that man, the, the, the master of the banquet, just tasting it and the <laughs> astonishment at yeah. the, uh, the transformation. Yeah. And, and we were talking before, about, weren't we, about that survey. I'll pick them up for you. That's right, I, was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was trying to smooth over that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that, that, that um, we were saying how maybe those people who had that survey haven't been had encounter with church. Yeah. And I was thinking, absolutely, but wouldn't it be great to turn that around? Mm. And for us to think about that in Aundel, that you couldn't move in Aundel without tripping over yeah. the church in action. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in this week of Christian unity, this week of prayer for Christian unity, thinking about how we as churches together can be that source of life-transforming wine, best of wine, yeah. that transforms our community yeah. uh, for the better. Yeah. And um, how do we love and bless our community at St. Peter's, we have these. This, um, I suppose, we've talked about the transformation that happens in us as we discover that relationship, mm. but also that transformation that then flows out yeah. as we bless others. And we have these words um, at St. Peter's that we want people to know God's love, mm -hmm. to know it for ourselves, and then to live differently in response, and then to be people who talk about overflowing, who give it, to know mm. it and live it and give it, that, we, that that overflows into action. There's um, a resource for teaching um, RE at school. And there's a beautiful mural, and it starts kind of with the story of God's redeeming people. And it begins at the beginning with redemption, and, and there's all these paint pots and God painting colour, like the creation of the universe. And then it kind of goes through the story of how human beings have messed up the beautiful world that God's given us. 
and it kind of goes into dull black and white colors with little bits of color and then it goes through to the story of Jesus and it's all in picture form mm. but after Jesus you then get this community of people who've got paint pots and paint brushes and they're going around the towns and cities and the, and the countryside and just painting color again mm. and that vision of church as being a community out and about not bound to a building but yeah. out and about yeah. painting, painting. colour mm. and I guess we've had a lot to reflect on at St Peter's about what it means to have a building but not be in it mm -hmm. what does church mean but ultimately church is about a community out yeah. and about making a difference yeah. um, totally <laughs> totally yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we say we're going to have a conversation but I end up preaching a sermon. Anyway. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's part of working together in unity. <laughs> but uh, it is really important. You know, we can we can sit and talk about this, and we can we can share, and I can listen yeah. to Stephen. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. We can we can do this, but actually, it's what we do tomorrow. Yeah. It's what we do after this, and and it's how we take that paint pot, how we take that overflowing grace. Yeah out into our communities and serve our communities yeah. you, you know it's it's not about baptist church yeah. of england methodist catholic yeah. whatever it's about the people of god yeah. being prepared to respond to his call to his love to his grace to the overflowing yeah. um abundance of what he gives to us yeah and painting the world in color rather than leaving it in black and white yeah and I guess it goes then from the grand kind of images that we paint, like all those words. Yeah. So what does it look like yeah. tomorrow? Yeah. What does it look like mm. this afternoon? Mm. And I guess maybe some of that is in Matthew 25, where you, when you were hungry, did I, you fed yeah. me. When I was yeah. thirsty, you gave me to drink. Mm. When um, that, those acts of sacrificial love and service to yeah. the people of our community yeah. and the world beyond. Yeah. Um, and and it's, maybe, the, it's the everyday stuff, isn't it? It's yeah. The, it's the, it's not looking for the grand gestures. Yeah. It's just living a life that is, is open yeah. to, to caring for others, supporting others, standing with others, yeah. um, doing those little bits. And yeah. those little bits all add up as well. So, um, sorry, I might have yeah, no, off there. No, I, I'm just, so I think um, it would be really good uh, that we can take that from there and people can think, what does it look yeah. like to paint the world in colour? to be people of this community then. Um, and what does that look like in practice? Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, we're going to worship God again now as we come to our um, next song, which is Water You Turned Into Wine. Let's uh, sing together.
Father God, we bring to you the pain and distress caused by the global COVID pandemic. Lord, please comfort those millions who are mourning across the world. Father, we lift to you all those people whose lives have been overturned by this disaster. And we pray, Lord, for those whose mental as well as physical health has suffered. We pray for those known especially to us, those who are lonely or isolated, for those who are struggling financially, and those who've suffered all kinds of loss, loss of contact, loss of their homes, loss of confidence, loss of hope. We pray that people would pause and see some sign of your everlasting and faithful love and peace. We thank you, Father God, for the thousands of people, professionals and volunteers who are on the front line of this terrible battle against COVID. We ask your blessing for these people and ask, Lord, that you protect and equip them for the task. In the UK, we pray especially for the NHS, for doctors, nurses, support staff and administrators. And Lord, we pray that the rollout of the vaccines would be efficient and careful. Through your Holy Spirit, please guide and give wisdom to our political leaders. Father, that they would make good decisions and give confidence to the country. And Lord, we're conscious that the wider economy with Brexit is under the radar once more. But Lord, we give you thanks that you know the bigger picture. Again, we pray for wisdom for those involved with the practicalities, praying for clarity for those who are organising the process and for those, Lord, who need to implement the changes. We pray, Lord, especially for our local businesses whose livelihoods have once again been under threat by this lockdown. Give courage, we pray, to them and encourage them in their efforts to climb back from all this. In the name of Jesus, hear our prayer. Mm. Lord Jesus, the, the Apostle Paul told the church at Ephesus that God had raised you up above all rule and authority, powers, dominions, and every title and has placed all things under your feet. So we come to you this morning with a prayer for that great country of the United States. We do so as President Biden takes over the reins of office in a troubled and disunited country. We pray that he and his Vice President Kamala Harris will be used by you to bring reconciliation between races and factions and healing to political wounds. We pray that as in its Pledge of Allegiance, the country will again become truly one nation under God. Give to the new President and those who advise him calmness in the face of storms, encouragement in the face of frustration, and humility in the face of success. Give them wisdom to know and to do what is right and the courage to say no to all that runs against your will. We pray for President Biden, the prayer that an old servant of yours in this country prayed before a battle in the Civil War. O oh Lord, you know how busy I must be this day. If I forget you, don't you forget me. And nearer to home, Lord, we pray for those whose daily lives have been disrupted as a result of Storm Christoph and the flooding that has followed. We look around at the boundaries of our own town and see the great swathe of water surrounding us. And we pray for those whose homes have been inundated. We pray for those in other places looking on anxiously as waters rise. And we pray for churches in those areas as they seek to bring practical help and comfort. We acknowledge that events like this are becoming more common and that the root lies in the ways in which we have tre treated your creation. You created the world and looked around and saw that it was good. Everything was in balance, but that balance is being lost. We each acknowledge that we have played a part in that each part may have been small, but together the impact has been huge. 
Equally, we recognise that any change we make will be small in its effect, but collectively the impact can make a real difference. So Lord, help us to look afresh at how we treat the finite resources of your creation and help us as churches to ensure that the decisions that we make take into account the impact that they have on the local and global environment. Help us to see your world through the eyes of its creator, whose wisdom and glory we praise. In the name of Jesus, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for our Christian sisters and brothers across this area. We thank you, Lord, for our shared vision of your glory and your steadfast love for those who know and love you. Thank you for all who are part of Andal Baptist Church. Following some changes in their leadership, Lord, we pray that things will quickly and comfortably settle into a new pattern of working. For one another, they would pray and seek a way forward through you. Thank you for their minister, Martin. And we pray that you will bless him as he leads his church family. In particular, Lord, we pray for them as they seek the way ahead to find premises for worship following this lockdown. Thank you, Lord, for their ongoing love and care for the nurture of young people in particular. And Lord, would you bless their children and families work at Carita. And Father, we pray for them as they start the process of recruiting a new youth worker. Thank you, Father, for their positive build and grow process. And Lord, would you bless them and encourage their house group members as they keep in touch with one another. In the name of Jesus, hear our prayer. Lord, there is an old hymn, sometimes called the Baptist National Anthem, that says, Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. This morning we recognise that ties that bind us together as Christians in this town, wherever we worship, whatever our different forms of worship, or whatever organisational structures we have in place. We want to pray for the community of your people who worships in St Peter's. We thank you that they stand today in a long line of witnesses who worshipped in that place for many centuries. We thank you for the place they have in our community. And we give you special thanks for the door that has been physically open throughout most of the difficult past year. We want to pray especially for the ministry team under Stephen, as they seek now to plan how the fellowship will emerge in a vibrant way from the current pandemic. Give them wisdom in their planning and energy in its implementation. We pray particularly for the discussions which will take place when the PCC meets for a vision day on the 6th of April. We thank you for the arrival of Annabelle who joined the team last November. She has come at a time when it's really difficult to meet and get to know people in the church and community. Enable her to make those contacts as quickly as possible and to settle into the work to which you've called her here. We thank you too for Martha's work amongst the young people. And we thank you for the positive side of social media that has enabled that work to continue. And Lord, we just ask for your continued encouragement to Martha and to all those involved in our work amongst young people in this town. So Lord, before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers, our fears, our hopes, our aims are one, our comforts and our cares. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. Thank you to those young people who have done our readings today. And I've actually got some news for our young people and our families also. And it's about summer. 
and summer seems quite far away at the moment but we've got a couple uh, dates to save in the diary so uh, we are planning to go to Limitless Festival so that is for young people who are in years 7 to 13 that will be finishing year 7 this year uh, so for that age and up that's really exciting that's at Stafford Showground we plan to go there that is from the 6th to the 11th of August uh, and obviously run by both Baptist Church and St Peter's in line with Okia. So please do uh, put that in your diary, the 6th to the 11th of August. And then the following week after that, so from the 16th to the 20th of August, is Chatterbox, with Chatterbox Plus starting the day before on the 15th to the 20th of August. So do make sure that you save those dates in your diary and we will bring out more information as the year goes on about that. But really looking forward to that. So save the date. So we're nearly at uh, the end of our service. Um, I don't know about you, Martin, but I feel no service is complete without a few notices. Got to have some notices. <laughs> yep, definitely got to have some notices. So um, one thing we're doing today is that after this service, um, as usual, for each of our churches, there'll be um, coffee via Zoom, but we're going to do that together as it's the week of prayer for Christian unity. Yep. So we're going to have a joint Zoom and uh, look out for the link which obviously will be different from the link you had last week. Whichever church you're part of, it's a new one for this week, for this uh, time together. So it'll be good to meet together later. And then, um, what are you doing this afternoon at five o'clock at OBC? Well, at five o'clock, we've got uh, our Zoom prayers. We did it for about half an hour. Um, the code's already been sent, so hopefully people have got that. Um, so that's what we do. And I think you do something similar, is that right? Yes, but we pray for an hour, Martin. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So again, there'll be um, a Zoom prayer meeting again. We really enjoyed meeting together last week, and at five o'clock, as Martin says, there'll be um, a prayer meeting, and the link should have been sent out. And uh, thought we'd just flag up. It was getting on, isn't it, for a year ago when yeah. we first began our midday yeah. prayers together, um, and the lockdown first happened. That was one of the first things we did. Yep, we, we chatted together, then we said, "How can we make a joint response?" Yeah, and it was, it was. This was the way we can do. It. We can do. Uh, Daily, started off as a daily pattern of prayer uh, at midday, and uh, it's still going. Still going. Tuesdays still and Thursdays. Yep. Tuesdays with OBC. Thursdays with St Peter's, and so um, do tune in and um, gather as we continue to reflect together each um, midday, and also pray uh, for um, our community and our NHS and the world. So yep. that's twelve o'clock Tuesday and Thursday. So we're going to worship God again as we come to sing um, our final hymn together. And can it be?
Jesus at Cana, you revealed the overflowing abundance of God's grace. As we faithfully seek to follow you, help us to be witnesses in Aundel and the world beyond of the power of your Holy Spirit to refresh and transform. Amen. And now a final blessing. May Jesus, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and always. Amen. And we're going to finish uh, by sharing the peace together. That's something we often do at St Peter's. Um, so here's um, an opportunity to wish one another God's peace. Through God's mercy, the dawn will come and light will blaze out, shining on those living in even the darkest valleys. And he will guide our feet into the path of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. So why not put a comment in the chat sharing peace with all those who are gathered together this morning. And we're really looking forward to meeting you in a few moments uh, for coffee over Zoom at 11.30.